Um, he is the founder and the namesake of Bailey's Bluff, which a lot of you may be familiar with. Uh, it's a settlement over along the, the coast, um, just south of here. Um, he actually settled in that area, actually purchased 22 acres of land there in 1866, just after the Civil War. Um, started a small mercantile business or trading business with local fishermen. Um, and from that point on, uh, the property sold just after his death in 1877, and it became an actual uh, popular location for the sponge fishermen. Um, they had established crawls out there, which were places that they could store the sponges. Um, and it actually became an active community in, in around 1901 was the location of a small post office, small church. Um, and, and again, this was a location for the sponge fishermen to come. Um, as far as the background and history of the cemetery is concerned, he was buried here in 1877. This was part of a community that was referred to back then, uh, according to the census records, as the Bailey Settlement. Um, there was a small church that sat on this location. Um, we've documented it being here from about 1877 to about 1885. Uh, and according to some of the research that we've been able to, to find, uh, the church was actually hit by lightning and burned to the ground. Um, at that point, the congregation split. Um, half of it became Baptist, and the other half actually became Methodist, and they established the next cemetery that we're going to be going to, uh, which is East Elfers. Uh, that became the Methodist Cemetery. Um, after the church here burned, it relocated to a more central location over off State Road 54, or what we now know as State Road 54, and it became the Anclote Baptist Church. Um, they continued to utilize the cemetery after, after the church here was no longer, um, and, and essentially this became, like I said, the Baptist Cemetery. Um, even though today it's, it's more non-denominational, it's not, not leaning towards the Baptist faith. Um, but we do have a lot of pioneers buried out here. Again, Peter Carr Bailey, he is the oldest marked burial, 1877. Um, and then we can take you through and show you a few of the other burials. We do have several uh, Confederate veterans that are buried out here as well. Um, uh, Michael Milbauer, he actually acquired this property and a lot of the surrounding area on tax deeds. Um, this was after the Great Depression. A lot of people had uh, difficulties paying their taxes. So he came in and he bought up a lot of land on, on tax deeds. Um, he owned the property, or his family owned the property, all the way up until the 1980s. Um, but backtrack a little bit, 1955, he dedicated half of the property for a Catholic cemetery. And the remaining property just remained the old Baptist cemetery, if you will. Um, in 1981, after the, son of, or after the death of his son, who inherited the property, um, the property was deeded equally between St. Leo University and Pasco County. St. Leo relinquished their interest in it and basically deeded it over to Pasco County and of course the Catholic Church remained owners of their section of it. But it was in 1981 that Pasco County became um, owners of the historic part of the cemetery. Um, back in 2007, we discovered that the cemetery was not being maintained. Um, one of the things the Millbowers had done before they passed away is they had established a trust fund that by 2007 had grown to about $275,000. And the families discovering that the cemetery had not been maintained was sort of a shock since there was such a significant amount of money there to maintain the cemetery. The interest alone from that account was enough to, to do the monthly maintenance out here. Um, what they had discovered was there was a bank in Alabama that basically was charging administrative fees in excess of $600 a month. And once those administrative fees were charged, there was not enough left over to maintain the cemetery. So the families came together. We organized a cemetery association. We started petitioning Pasco County, the owners, to step up, do something about it, since there was money there to maintain it. And they, along with the Catholic Church, uh, petitioned the local circuit court 
uh, to basically get control of that trust fund so that the maintenance could be done uh, accordingly. Uh, they entered into an agreement with the St. Petersburg Diocese, who own the Catholic section, and they now act as the maintenance managers of the cemetery. Uh, they come out here several times a month, mow the grass. Uh, we recently had the trees trimmed. Um, but you know, again, this is the right thing to do. There's money there to take care of the cemetery. This is where our founders are laid to rest. And you know, it's, it's not a respectable thing to just let the cemetery go.